Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Karen Cannell, TH Technology, and I want to say thank you to Gianni for setting this up and inviting me. Um, thank you to Alan and Niall. Um, I really enjoyed those presentations and uh, again, um, I, I hope everyone is adapting to uh, working from home and learning from home and uh, just hang with it. We get another, who knows, uh, weeks, months, years. Anyhow, I, I hope the online learning continues. Uh, this presentation about validating your validations in APEX came about because uh, we're doing an upgrade on one of my clients, a major upgrade, and it became very clear looking at the applications that not only are there not standards for validating, that people were unclear on what works, where, um, how much they had to do, where they should do it, and why. Um, so that's this presentation. Uh, might be seem like basics to you, but even when I put it together, I was kind of surprised about some things. Um, I, I am TH Technology, the owner. I started out in mechanical engineering and took this detour into software. Was real fortunate to work with HTMLDB when it first came out. I've been doing Oracle and Oracle tools for way too long. Um, I am on the OD Tug board. Uh, volunteer for your local user groups. Um, that's the best way to learn. It's a good way to get involved, meet other people. You know who to call when you um, get in trouble. Go for it. Um, as an OD Tug board member, vice president this year, I need to let you know, as everyone knows. Um, and I'm kind of bummed because everyone was coming to my neighborhood. Um, and there's all kinds of fun things to do around here on 4th of July except this year. So um, very soon you will hear about an OD Tug Learn From Home series. This is not a case scope replacement. Um, it's just um, very much like ACEs at Home, another way to learn at home, pick up some of the content you might have seen at case scope and um, kind of do it at, at your leisure fitting in. Um, myself and everyone at OD Tug wish you um, the best. Stay safe. Stay sane. I'm getting to the stay sane part. Um, and it is Star Wars Day, so may the 4th be with you. And um, if you haven't gone out there and watched a Star Wars something, uh, today's the day. Today's the day. Here's where I ask you um, what version are you are? What are your current validation practices? Um, are you nervous that you might learn something you're not doing? Um, so of course, um, I'm gonna guess what you just said. Um, so we're gonna talk about why validate where validations in Apex, of course, on items and in interactive grids and a general validation strategy. Um, bottom line is, you know, to put all these validations in and to think about a validation strategy, you work a little harder, you do a little bit more, but the payoff is better data and a better user experience. Um, and real important in today's world, more so than five years ago, definitely more so than 10 years ago, um, a safer user interface, because there's, as anyone who uses Zoom know, there's hackers everywhere, even in Zoom. Um, so our agenda is just that. Why validate? I'm going to talk a teeny bit about database, server, and client, um, and a lot about validations in Apex. And uh, along the way, you'll pick up the strategy. So. When I started this, um, the title was really cute, Both Sides Now. It's, it's not both sides, it's all sides. Wherever that data can get in, wherever injection can get in, you need to validate. Um, and that starts at your database. Um, next, um, it would be a, next line would be your, your server, your Apex engine, and on the client end. Users today expect that immediate feedback. So we as developers really need to um, to provide a good user interface, um, a client client feedback. Here's my database feel. I know Apex is wonderful. You can drag and drop a spreadsheet in there. I've talked to Joel Coleman about this. I, I love that feature, but if you're building something bigger than a spreadsheet, have a data model. Enforce constraints, enforce your data types. We, we live in an Oracle database, use the database. If you need a certain size number or character, 
put that in your data model. If it's a date, make it a real date. Should it be a date? Should it be a timestamp? And um, in Apex, as always, you need to be aware of implicit conversions. Apex is very generous, lets you get away with things. It'll also bite you when you least expect it. So all of this talking about the database and what fits in where and how to do your data model, that's a whole nother presentation. But the reminder here, the point is use your database. So why validate? Why validate it all? It's a pain to write. Do our users really care? Well, it's data quality. And, and I would say it's, it's just data quality, but nowadays we have to validate to prevent SQL injection, to improve the user experience. Um, bottom line, that's where we live now in our, and I don't think it's gonna go the other direction. Um, that's my last talk about database. So where we validate in the database when you build your model and your server on submit. This, these are the validations that happen on submit. And the client side is the stuff that happens right when you right in the web browser or in your phone. And when it happens is exactly the reverse. Um, I'm typing something in my phone. It tells me immediately you can't, you know, I need a, I need a number, not a character. When I submit, then it goes to the server and the database is the last line of defense. Um, I believe that your users should know about an error before it hits a database. We don't, we don't like users getting the database errors. So to give you the, the visual, um, your user lives on the client and they're entering data in here. And ideally they get feedback right in front of them as they enter things. If they don't, um, if you don't have client side validation, then their entry goes all the way to the server. If, if it fails the server side validation, it travels all the way back to the client. They make a correction and eventually it hits the database. If everything's okay with your data model and, and the values that got entered, then, then we're submitted. So what we're trying to avoid is this back and forth and back and forth with, with client side. So the more you can tell your user up front, the, the less back and forth we have. So what are validations? Just simple data checks. Um, even a, a check for SQL injection is mainly a data check. Does this look suspicious? Does this look the way it's supposed to? Um, in your Apex app, we're doing those data checks on a page item. Maybe we're going by page and doing multiple page items in a grid or, um, or dare I say tabular form. And if you're using tabular forms, only if you haven't upgraded yet can you still use tabular forms. Upgrade, get off your tabular forms, get into grids. Um, you're going to have to brush up on your JavaScript skills a little bit, but um, it's worth it. It's worth it. Get used to it. Um, in grids, column and row, and sometimes per grid, multi multiple rows, multiple columns. This slide is the one that I wish everyone that um, was working on some of my projects right now knew about. And, and surprisingly enough, um, Apex client side validation came in in Apex 5.1. And it's still there and it's going to be there. It's not going away. That was 2016, probably mid 2016. But I still find people don't totally understand what this client side validation does. First of all, it's there. Um, you don't have to turn it on, it's just there. So buttons like submit buttons where execute validations is set to yes. Um, also perform these client side validations. Just like if I said value required, then it'll tell me right away. And the submit will not happen until the issues are fixed. Thus, we all started seeing this correct errors before saving messages. And we're all pretty familiar with that one by now. What also came with client-side validation is a bunch of JavaScript APIs to actually use that client-side validation. Apex page validate, page submit with validate true. Um, that's a key component of that. And there's ones on the bottom, this get validity, set custom validity, and then the use of Apex message in um, communicating some of this information. I'll talk about all of these later. Uh, for now, let's just jump in and I'll show you some stuff, like what the heck am I talking about? 
Um, this is just a very, very simple um, application. It doesn't do anything but um, validate things. Um, and actually, if I think this is visible to everyone because it's um, web page and it's Zoom. If it's not visible, then um, somebody um, chat away or something and let me know. I can make it a little bigger for you. I think when I get to other pages, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe that's okay. So all these buttons do is just what they say. Um, this does an Apex page validate. This does a standard submit page. This does a submit page by Apex submit. Um, this is just the redirect URL. So these are these are exactly equivalent, essentially. And this just does a JavaScript Apex page submit with validate equals true. And I'll um, show you the syntax for that because it's important. Um, this validate only is simply Apex page validate. Um, this is just your basic submit page. This is your dynamic action. Submit page, nothing fancy. This is the JavaScript submit. This one is going to come to be your friend. Submit with validate true. This format of Apex page submit means the client side validations will fire. So why do we care? I have a bunch of um, a bunch of simple things. Um, text, which I required um, declaratively. All I did was say value required. Nothing else. No dynamic actions. No nothing on this page. All I did was say on, on this item. All I did was say val value required. On this guy. I didn't say value required, but I said, aha, I'll use that required template. That'll do it, right? And then on this other text, I did neither. It's, it's not required. I didn't do anything, no validations at all. So when I do um, ABEX page valid, I'm just going to do that client side validation uh, because this is declared. Um, required, I, auto, it, I did nothing else. And it, it says, okay, fill out this field. Um, my required template did nothing other than give me the little star that visually tells the user, yep, this one's required. And of course, when I did nothing, I got nothing. So um, if I submit this page, I get, because I said required, now I've got a, a server side validation that said um, that, that fired as well. Um, these gold ones up here, I prefer to call it gold um, rather than ugly yellow. Um, but they're noticeable. That's the point of a warning. Um, that's, that's your client side stuff. You notice my number fired as well. Numbers are a little different. So um, if I reset everything and, and I haven't even entered anything, you know, as soon as I enter something, there's no, um, and notice this too, if I just tab over, I'm not getting any immediate feedback here. I have to actually click a button. And it, and I, it by default says, please fill out this field. With numbers, um, well, it's, let's, um, my submit will complain. Um, these are doing the same submits. Uh, when I do the validate true submit, now I'm back to my client side validation. So without any work here, other than adding this validate true to my page submit, I got the client side validation and saved myself a trip to the server. So really this one goes all the way to the server and back and just adding validate true um, gives me the client side. And this is just value required. So a real simple one, low hanging fruit, easy to do. Um, it's a gimme pretty much. And what they're using is HTML5 
five settings um, mm -hmm. to do some of this stuff. Um, so you got it for tech stuff. Um, client side, if we submit with validate true, but notice that your normal submit buttons and your normal dynamic actions that apex.submit don't fire that client side. Um, number field, um, A, B, C. Um, oh, let me reset. Um, all I have is that it's a number. I don't have anything else turned on on this field. I don't even think I said required on this one. Nope, I did say that was required. This one's required. This next one, I gave it, because we can do this on numbers, a minimum and a maximum. And then I gave this one a min max, but it's not required. So let's see what happens with those. Um, clear these. You can tell I was playing because some things. Oh, and just so you know, my submits, all they do is nothing. Nothing. So nothing's hit. Nothing even gets to a server. So if I just validate here, and I'm just going to turn off these because. We all get the text stuff, and I didn't even need that one. So if I just validate with text, because I have required set, it says, please fill out this field. Now let's enter a value, and that's, that's as I expected. Please fill out this field, and um, if I just do a submit, it's going to complain, right? We expect that. Um, notice that my message changed. Uh, well, no, my message didn't change. It's just the name, my label must have some value, must have some value. So I'm going to give it a number. I'm purposely not giving it a number in range. And I'm going to clear this guy and just validate. And nothing. Client side validation with a min max set doesn't do anything. Um, client side validation, if I do a character here, interesting. Well, well how did I get that? That's because I forgot. I forgot. Sorry, guys. I actually entered where did I where to go? A format mask. If I get rid of that format mask, then that's that A would be perfectly acceptable in that uh, number field, even though it's a number field. So when would it fail? Now I'm getting nothing at all. Because I, without that format mask, um, that A isn't going to fail until it hits the database. Not good. We want, it, we want it to fail well before then. So a real easy thing to do, just give it a format mask. Real simple. Whatever your number is. Now this range thing, when does this hit? If it's not hitting on my, my client side validations, my range is going to hit when I do my server side. Really interesting. Remember, I have the range on both of these. This one's not required, but it's still giving me the message just by entering a min and a max value. Kind of nice stuff to get right out of the box. So my, and then my, my select list, if I do not enter anything, um, that's just going to um, complain um, because it's a, a select. Um, my submit's going to give me the full complain. And now, if I do the client side, you know, my Apex submit with validate true, turn on the client side, it tells me to correct this error, doesn't mention any of the number stuff because nothing in those settings are client side validation. You're getting all this, right? I'm throwing a lot of, who, who does this, right? So let's look at, um, so, so some things matter here, right? So let's go to um, some text subtypes. Not sure if you guys are even aware that we have these. Uh, simple email subtype. Um, if I have nothing in here, um, then in Apex it says, please fill out this field. If I put in 
um, uh, an email address, but it's bad, please enter an email address. Well, when does it know it's an email address? Let's see. Still not an email address. Is it an email address? Now it's an email address. Now, that might be an email address to client-side validation, but it's not an email address to me. So I'm going to have to add more validation behind here if I really want an email address. So, um, and on submit, same thing. It took it. It took both of these. Um, URL subtype, same sort of thing. I should be able to say thtech.com, I would think, and um, validate. It doesn't think that's a URL. But if I submit, it does. Pretty cool. Now, when does this think it's a URL? Interesting. Uh, colon. Now it's a URL, but that's not a URL. So these um, text subtypes get you part of the way, but not all the way. Um, all they get you is a little bit of client-side validation. Um, and because I had already um, submitted there, that one went, we, we saw that the client side worked. If I make the change, then it's going to complain again and steal my bad email address. So don't rely on these subtypes. Really check it out and make sure they're doing what you want them to do. Uh, something else to think about. Um, Pop-up list of values, radio groups, and shuttles. These are all set to required and required template. Um, just to prove it to you that I'm not. Um, by the way, these top buttons are the same all the time. I'm not going to show you those, but these are all um, set to required and required template. Ah, it's not going to do that for me. Just trust me, the required is on. Value required. Value required on, on each one of these. I'm, 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 not going to go through them all for time. So if X page validate, it should tell me that, right? Um, these pop-up list of values, radio groups, um, shuttles, no complex types, no um, client-side validation. Um, but when I click the server, they do have um, they do have validation server side. Now wait, Karen, why do you have two on pop-up list of values? because I actually added a server-side validation here, just a simple not no, just to show that if you have required yes, you get one. If you put your own dynamic action, I'm not dynamic action, if you put your own validation in, you get both. It doesn't recognize it. Oh, she's got a validation on that already. So it, it fired the required and the not null may not be what you want. You might want to turn required off if you have your own validation there. Just saying, may not be what you expect. Okay, data valid message. How are we doing on time? Good. Um, data valid message is a new thing we can enter in the column um, to give us a custom error message here. Now, if you remember back on the other pages, it would just say value is please enter a value please it or must be yeah please enter a value I, I even have to go back to remember it but here I'm able to enter um, my own message through this data valid message and this is um, very very simple I'm just saying data valid message um, text is required please enter all alpha characters blah 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 so that gives me this custom message. Um, phone number is another one of those subtypes. Um, and again, I have, a, I have a data valid message on all of these. Um, I think this is pretty much, nah, that's not my phone message. But um, you, get, you get the idea, format, blah, blah, blah. And I'm giving them inform, you know, informative messages here. Data valid message, phone number, using the phone number. Oh, yeah, that's the title, sorry. My data valid is way over here somewhere, or I copied that in wrong. 
no, oh, I copied it in wrong. So we don't have a data valid there. So it just says valid phone number is required. Um, URL subtype, same thing. Um, with phone number, um, so there's my validate. My submit is going to do the same thing. Now we're back to text must have some value. Email address is required. Here it's using my data valid message. Um, but here it, it did not. So what's what's the, you know, what's going on here? This valid phone number is required. Well, that one's coming in because I gave it a valid, a server side validation. As a matter of fact, I gave it two. Um, and in there I entered an error message. So my error message here um, would be different if they're different, it, it's confusing to the user. So this text is not null, says text is required, it must be all alpha. Um, that's what I get. Um, this is my required text. And this is, um, where's my other text? I should have, text must have some value. There's my data valid message. And then when I submit, I get the required. So not what I expected, the text must have, the, this fire is because of the required. Um, same with all these other submits, do the same thing. And it's only when I do the validate true that I the client side stuff fires and I get these data valid messages that I had put in. So using the data valid message gives you control over the client side message, but not the server side messages. And when these two messages are different, I don't know about you, but I as a developer want my end users to get the same message all the time. So all I'm doing here is pointing out, you know, data valid message gets you the nicer messages. If you don't follow through with a server side validation that has the same message, then you're going to be getting different, um, different messages. Um, phone number subtype, uh, ABC. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't care. Even though I said phone number subtype, um, ABC, it's, it's fine with that. If I get really long, um, it doesn't matter. That page validate, it liked it as long as it was, it doesn't care. Um, phone number subtype just gives you that input type equal, equals TEL. If you want a specific format there, you've got to give it to, um, this is my data valid message. Um, you've got to give it a pattern, an HTML pattern. So if you want that kind of automatic without doing too much work in my custom attributes here, and I put that pattern in, um, I just use phone number because it's a common one. So now on my phone number, if I do this um, ABC thing, um, page validate, now it's going to complain that it's not a valid phone number phone number. Even if I give it a whole string of ones, it's going to complain it's not a valid phone number. And because I gave it a data valid message that tells the user the format that I want, it gives me, um, it gives me a, a smart message. And again, the submit knows nothing about that, that stuff until I give it to it in a validation, which I have on my my phone number, this one does the regular expression. Notice I have two here. I get the required, the, I get the not null. Where is it? Oh, I don't get the not null because it's not null, but I, I have the pattern. So you see how confusing it can get really fast if you're not thorough and consistent about client side and server side. Um, some people say, well, I'll just do it all client, client side and I'll lock it down. So let's go look at this for a minute. Um, text ABC one, two, three. I have a setting here. I took that one. 
Um, I don't think I have data valid message, email subtype, URL. These are validating here. Um, A, B, C, validate. And it, it knows because I have a pattern in here that um, it's got, it's, it should only have, um, well, I gave it a pattern in here. Enter text, no numbers. I could have done this a lot of other ways, um, my client side. So here I'm actually getting a little fancy with this, um, but I'm using all the standard Apex item stuff. I look at the item, I apply a pattern, um, numbers and, and characters. Um, if I have an item um, and it matches set custom validity, that says um, set it to blank, that means things are valid. Set it to invalid, that means it's gonna use my data valid message if it's there. If not, it's gonna default to the um, regular stuff. And then, um, raise and clear the messages based on my custom validity. So um, my, my Apex page validate is now entering those things for me. Um, but I can submit and get all around that because I don't have, um, well, I've submitted, I don't have the client side. Soon as I um, turn this back on, now I've got my um, my client side validation firing, but remember the check on text was in a dynamic action on change, which didn't fire when I click submit. So there's another hole. So more holes than you cared to know about, huh? Um, improved messages, improved messages. Let's go over here. Um, oh, I see. I jumped back. That's good. Um, I have the same validation things going here, um, but now I've done a little bit more work with JavaScript and I've made my, my client side message, not only does it show inline, it's showing up here in the, the normal server side message. To me, this is consistent and it's using my data valid message so I don't have to type the message twice. Um, now, if I do my, my phone number, that same kind of validation for my phone number, it's telling me right away my phone number is wrong. And number, I've got that same kind of range thing, it's telling me right away. Now, this pretty please, not really the message you want to put in front of your users. Um, make your user messages consistent, professional, and um, yeah, consistent and professional all the way through. We would want to take that pretty please out of there before this went into production. And I think all of us have sometimes seen a weird message that um, you go, wow, they let them write that and that got into production? I've seen a few of them um, and we know they're out there. Um, now in this case, this is, this is a fun part. Now I've got, um, when I click submit, I've got these inline messages here and the same messages here but the key thing is this is all client side and how did i do this um is this more visible i'm going to go in here because it's going to be easier to read um that's not the right page go into here i have these before page submit um, well, I'll do the lose focus first. When I lose focus on any of these items, I get the item, I clear any errors, um, I, I'm setting a, a pattern. Um, if I have an item and it matches, it's valid. If it doesn't, use the data valid message on the item. And then here I'm pushing that error onto my page. I haven't done a submit, I haven't hit the server, I'm just showing the error on the page. That's what gives me this um, server-side looking message, but it gives it to me on client side. These are all identical, just changing the pattern. Could I put that in a function? You betcha. 
um, when it comes to this before page submit, I am just um, glomming them all together. Again, could this um, wrong one validate all items? Listen, there we go. I'm just glomming them all together. That's all. I'm checking the validity of each of these things and adding them to the message stack. Pretty cool stuff. So that's enough for the moment. Let's go back to some slides. So um, what did we learn? Um, there's lots of valid validation items right out of the box that required um, the subtypes, item not null, dynamic actions. And my recommendation is that you use the simplest first, um, but you gotta know what they do. Um, we found out that where you validate matters. Um, client side gives you that feedback right away. Um, there's a few declarative settings in there even before you build dynamic actions, but that might leave holes. Um, server side gives you that feedback after the submit, and there's lots more de declarative validations in there, lots more options. Someone said um, there's 43 different options. Um, Use both, make sure you don't have holes, make sure you're consistent. We learned that how you submit matters, um, whether it's a definite submit or via dynamic action, or if it's that Apex page submit with validate true, which will also fire your client side validations. It's your job as a developer to know the difference, be consistent and don't leave holes. Um, and yeah, there's a little hole there. Um, how you say it matters. Um, you can take the default error messages, um, which are different client side than when they hit the server. Somebody should have thought of that one, um, but they didn't, so we have to. Um, use data valid message to sync things up. Remember, data valid message is not recognized by um, out of the box by our server declarations. Use that Apex item set custom validity and use Apex message to sync up your messages. Where you say it um, matters. Um, I think users expect inline notifications now. I like to use inline and notification on large pages or mobile um, stuff. These things won't make sense. Um, I'm not talking about error pages at all, but that is another option for you. And again, just be informative, direct, and be consistent. So do it declaratively first if you can. Um, use the item types. Use that min-max, but remember where it works and where it doesn't. Um, remember that your um, pop-up list of values, your shuttles and radio groups, you're going to have to build your own stuff there. Use the subtypes, but remember their limitations. Um, use the easy stuff. Um, use data valid message, but this, this slide tells you how you don't want to have your messages. You know, a valid email is required, a valid, you know, the, the case isn't the same. Um, you got to enter, probably not a good way. Um, be consistent in how you do these. Um, use conditions on your validations. If you do, then your validation is simpler. You don't have to do all the if then else in your validations. Um, Server-side validations. This is a, the ones we're warm and comfy about because we've had them from the beginning. Um, they fire on submit. There's many types and conditions. This is where you've got those 43 options. Notice in here those um, item not null. Use the declarative ones first before you go to the PL SQL function body and function returning error text. These are your last resorts. Simpler declarative, use that, use that first. That's what I just said. Um, use your conditions again. Um, they simplify your validation code. Use things like the sequence. If you're building a grid validation, you need to set that editable region or it doesn't know what item you're talking about. Use the types. Um, always execute your call as to whether that's on or not. Um, Error attributes, use consistent error messages everywhere you need to enter that error message in. Um, your display locations, again, be consistent. Client side, this is where it gets fun. Um, 
We have some of those HTML5 settings we can use now, but we still have to close the holes. So we're building dynamic actions and we're writing JavaScript. On change versus on loose focus, that's up to you. Um, there are probably other events that you may want to capture validations on. That's per your requirements. Again, use the conditions where you can. Improve the message where you can. Um, you're going to get into Apex model and interactive grid stuff. This is a simple <laughs> JavaScript validation. Um, and this is one I showed you before where we're using Apex item, getting the value. Um, we're using um, the set custom validity to either clear it or set it to invalid. And then we're checking that validity. And then we're using Apex message to, to show the errors. And that gives you consistent client side messaging. Um, interactive grids, we hadn't looked at this and I'm, I got a few minutes to do this. Because each column is an item, everything I've just talked about with page items and pages works in an interactive grid. Because each, it, this was such a gift. If, if anyone's done validations or even cascading list of values in grids, uh, in tabular forms, you appreciate grids. Um, ename must be alpha, the same pattern, data valid message, you can set this in your grids. Um, the same server-side validation, PLSQL version that we're used to. Um, the same validation as a dynamic action it looks like this. So we have um, Apex item, get value, um, do my logic, set custom validity. And in this case, I didn't have a data valid message. I, I could have, but I said, said custom validity and I gave it the error message um, or I clear it. So that's your equivalent on grids. Um, I'm gonna skip this for a moment. Um, I think I'll be able to come back to it in a minute because I think you guys have seen grids. Um, server side row validation. I think we just went through this one. Oh, this is, all this is showing is it's a row validation. So we have commission and salary in the same, um, in the same validation. You can reference declaratively like this using Apex item, every column in the row. Um, if you have to go multi-row, then you have to go to the model and loop through your model. Um, some people do it with get selected values, more often than not, you're going into the model and just looping through all the rows that are there. And just because of time, I'm not doing that. Now this I do want to show you. Um, created and modified rows versus all submitted rows. Not all rows get submitted. So let's go, um, this is real important. So we're going to go to this grid for this. Um, I have a bunch of validations on this page. One being the um, employee name, um, employee name check. Oh, I, I need to do it this way. I have no idea if that's right. Um, so now it complains. Um, I'm not allowing special characters except for a dash. And you're like, well, why, why did this one get away with it? Well, because it, it um, I haven't gone to it yet. Well, let's do the save. Let's do the save. It's going to complain. Um, and it only complained about this one. It didn't complain about that one. I haven't touched that row. So even though I said all submitted rows, this is not a submitted row. As soon as I touch this row, and um, now I save. Um, oh, it didn't complain. As soon as I touch this guy, oh, because that was valid. This was OK. But as soon as I touch the row, it's it's valid for, oh, uh, there it goes. I don't know why I didn't click in immediately. Um, but there's there's my error here. Because I touched the row, it got, got out there for validation. Um, main point I wanted to show you on grids, the not nulls. Um, and again, that's that didn't hit um, client side because I hadn't touched the column. If I'm in here now, it'll complain right away. Um, so just things to be aware of with your grid that all submitted rows, a row is only submitted. So 
Um, and pretty much everything else applies there. So your basic strategy, strategy now, well, I threw a lot at you that maybe you knew before, maybe you didn't, but there's a lot of holes in there, man, if you don't think about it and be consistent about what you're doing. My recommendation is you do it declaratively first, create the server side that you need, create the client side, because now we're enhancing the user experience and catching things right away. Um, be consistent, use the same validations. Um, I have an example in there I didn't show you was, um, I had the number range different on the client side than the server side. Well, isn't that a bummer? I, I correct things, I click submit, and then it gives me a different message. That's just, that's just user abuse. Don't abuse your users. Um, and make sure your help gives the same messages too. Yeah, this should be a bigger bullet than it is. Um, that, that confuses users as well. Um, make sure all your checks, um, all your requirements, all your validations follow the requirements of your whatever you're building. Check that everything fires when it should. Check the user experience. If you have 27 client-side validations one at a time and it takes the user 10 minutes to get through the page, you might want to work on that a little. So secure all the fronts and um, play with it. Go out and learn in your applications what fires when and why and is that what you want. Use the sample applications. You can create them, wreck them, reinstall them, you know, delete them, reinstall them. Play with it to get your requirements right. Um, go out and learn more. That's um, these, attend more of these. These are great. And um, if we've got questions, now is a good time. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can always contact me, email, um, Twitter, I'm on at TH Technology. And um, stay safe out there, whatever you're doing. Um, another chunk of time, and we'll be back to regular, um, hopefully, still doing these uh, Zoom sessions. So thank you very much. And I see one question that may or may not apply. Um, data valid message. Is that working in every browser? Is it browser sensitive? And can we do this on interactive grid columns? Um, so yes, the data valid, da data valid message, I believe that is working with every browser. And I, I will have to confirm about IE because I avoid IE now. Um, but I'll check that. And can you do this on interactive grid columns? Yes, you can. You can also use the patterns on interactive grid columns. And I find that's the easiest way to do validations in interactive grids because I'm not littering my grid with, with um, dynamic actions because it, it, it just keeps the page cleaner, less code on the page. Um, thank you, Lino. Any other questions? Okay, yes, thank there you. There seems very to much. be a second question from Hilda Hainan. Okay, with all the validations. Oh, yes, is, um, is this application available? Yes, just email me and I'll send it off to you. Um, I, and actually, I'll, I'll put it up on apexoracle.com. Um, this, I just moved it up to apexoracle.com to see what it would look like in 20.1. Um, I also, if you're not on 20.1, I have it in 19.2. So whichever you prefer, let me know. And I'll open it up and, um, and, and I'll post it. I'll post it on Twitter and I'll, I'll make sure Gianni has it as well. How's that? Thank you very much.